Okay, this is actually a relatively routine mechanics, forces, pulleys problem. Um, this shouldn't present too much of a problem because it should be something that you recognise from your revision. Um, but, you know, let's enjoy this and do it the way that you should do all problems, which is to start by doing force diagrams for the separate connected particles. So we've got two particles and the force is acting on them. Tension's pulling up on both and the weight of each is pulling down, 3G and 5G. So whilst they're separate diagrams, they're tied through the algebra. Now, let's do an F equals MA for both of them. Now, first we need to think about what our positive direction will be. Well, maybe it's helpful to draw on the acceleration on each diagram. Clearly the 5G is going to win, um, so this one's going to accelerate down, and this one's going to accelerate up. So looking at this diagram to begin with, I'm going to do F equals MA using up as the positive direction. So the force is T take away 3G, and MA is 3A. If we do the same with the second diagram, but I'm going to change my positive direction now to be down. So now I'm going to have 5G take away T equals MA, which is 5A this time. Great. Now the easiest way to, you've got two simultaneous equations there, and the easiest way to eliminate something is to simply add the two equations together. Because you have a t here and a negative t here, and those will eliminate when you add the two left-hand sides together and the two right-hand sides together. So if you add the two left-hand sides together, the t's eliminate, and you get 5g take away 3g, which is 2g, and the right-hand side be 8a, because you're adding, remember. And that gives us A is 2.45 metres per second squared. And if we substitute that back into here, say, you get T equals 3 lots of that uh, plus 3G, 3 times 9.8. And that gives us 36.75 newtons. Great, that's part one. Then, after descending 2.5 metres... Q strikes the plane, so Q is going to accelerate down and hit the ground and then stop. P, therefore, is going to be accelerated upwards. But when Q hits the ground, P will keep on going upwards, but uh, affected by gravity. So it will only go up a little bit further. The string will be slack, of course, and then it will fall back down and hit the string again. Um, effectively, it will make the string taut again, um, probably pull Q up a bit but that's a very different phase of motion that we won't get into. So we're interested in, basically we need to know how fast is Q going when it hits the ground, so that we know how fast P is going up when that phase of motion ends, and then we can explore how much further P goes up, falling under gravity. And when I say falling there, I don't just mean it's going down. Something can be falling, but still going up. Falling just means that the only force acting on the, on the object is gravity. It can still be going up or down. OK, let's go through this. So phase one. Phase one is where Q is accelerating down and P is accelerating up. The string's taut, and as we've calculated before, the acceleration of the system is 2.45 metres per second squared. Suvat, because it's constant acceleration, uh, we know that Q's gone down, so we're thinking about P. That's why I put P here. We're thinking about upwardness. Um, we're interested in P. So P's going to go 2.5 metres up, because that's how far Q is going to fall. Um, U, is, it starts at rest, so the initial speed, initial velocity rather, is zero. V is what we're interested in. We need to know how fast is P going at the end of this phase of motion. And we know the acceleration is positive 2.45 because it's accelerating upwards. So V we want to know. Now if you use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS and substitute into that, you very quickly get a value for V. So V squared comes out to be 12.5, sorry, 12.25, and V therefore is 3.5 metres per second. Great, that's our initial velocity for the second phase of motion. So second phase of motion is where Q's out of the picture altogether. P 
is just now falling under gravity. So P's been accelerated up here, and now it's this bit where it just goes up and down a little bit. Now, we could, if we, well, it, it's, it's understandable, forgivable, perhaps, if you were to set S to be zero, because, of course, that's the complete... Uh, once P goes up a little bit and then down to back where it was before, its total displacement will be zero. But if you do that, you won't be able to work out how far up it went. And we need to know how far up it went and how far back down it went here, because that's the question. Find the distance it travels. So we're not allowed to do this, I'm afraid. That won't help us. We're going to have to instead... Think, uh, try and work out how far up it goes and then just double it because of course it will just go back down that, that little distance there. U is the, remember the final speed from phase one is the initial speed for phase two. We're interested in how far it goes up until it stops momentarily, so V will be zero. A, remember it's falling under gravity now, so A is negative 9.8, it's accelerating downwards, it's moving upwards to begin with, but it's accelerating downwards under gravity. Great. V squared minus, sorry, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Again, substitute into that and rearrange it. Sorry, the text is so small. You'll eventually get S is 0 0.625, which means it's gone up an extra 62 and a half centimetres, which means it's going to fall back down 62 and a half centimetres until it hits the string again, hit or makes the string taut. Um, so we just need to double that value to get a final answer of 1.25 metres.